yes, we're back with Hibiki <laughs> and with another episode of Blooms for You. So, yep, bit by bit, we can see Hibiki coming onto his own. We are having more and more clusters open and more buds open within the clusters. I still have like three or four more clusters to go. So we're going to be busy with Hibiki for a while. Welcome everybody. Thank you very much for joining. And let's uh, get a move on with regards to showing what's been blooming. Or, as always, something may still be in bloom. But let's have a look and see what's been going on. Papilionanthe panduculata. Supposedly. I don't think it is. That's not what my pictures tell me. She is a first time bloomer for me. So now I am on the hunt for an ID. But before I go and do that, I did want to film this before the third bud opens and dedicate these blooms to Kim Paquette. Thank you so much for being on my channel for your support in the comments and your motivational kind words. I really appreciate it. And I wanted to get these blooms filmed, but still with a bud not open yet. So let's get a better view. You can see that the petals are actually folded down. They're not open. But look at that. I. I love, I love the color combination. I'm not entirely sure what to think of it not being an open bloom, but there's nothing, there's nothing wrong with this color combination. I think it's absolutely gorgeous. So Kim, these bloom for you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. The ants are loving it. And this is why I wanted to film the bud before it opens. Look at it. It actually, in its own right, resembles an ant head. Don't you think? It's got all the little antennas up here and looks like an ant head. I love it. I love it. <laughs> I don't know who came first, the ant or the papilionantha bud. And then these little antennae things, pokey things up there, that's actually the casing for the sepals. And in the back here, you can see them represented and drying up. So, Kim Paquette. I actually made it to get this one to bloom, despite not knowing what it is exactly. It is not a penduculata according to my records. But as a first time bloomer, I think she is still very gorgeous. And I hope that you like her. And thank you so very much for your support on my channel. It would be so wrong of me, Kim, if I did not film this in the sunshine, also with all three blooms open. So here's a quick clip next day to show you what these <laughs> colors do in the sun. I still haven't quite figured her out yet. I googled her last night to try and find an ID and I'm not quite sure. It could be that she's a bit floppy because it's her first blooms. Blooms that I see that are similar, actually the petals are upright. So maybe because this is my little sample first bloom, the petals are staying down, but either way. Oh, look at those colors. So I just had to add this on. Kim, you've got to see this in the sun. I should have put a warning ahead of this. Put your shades on, right? Together with a hippiki and these colors. <laughs> Wear sunglasses prior to watching this video. Anywho, Kim, thank you. I just wanted to show them to you in the sun. Neo Finisha Falcata, second spike. Maria Galdino. That would be Maria with a double L as opposed to IA Galdino. Thank you for being on my channel. I have to apologize that I cannot find the comment 
that uh, initially put you on my list. I don't know how Google works. Sometimes I can search the names and then we can recap. But if I don't take notes then and there, I don't understand why I can't search the comments section to find the name. I don't know and I'm really, really sorry I can't be a bit more specific regarding your comment and what you said on one of my videos. I am so sorry, but needless to say, I want to dedicate my second spike of my Neo Finisher Fakata to you. You can see the first spike, the blooms are just about done. Still some looking really nice. And the second spike has opened. And now I can give them to you, Maria. Thank you very much. I have three spikes on this one this year. Same as last year. So we will look at that when that one's open. But for now, Maria, these six blooms of my Neo Farcata go to you. She lives in semi-shade at the moment simply because she is in bloom. And I still have her wrapped in moss. That was done earlier this year and I normally leave it for a year or eight months depending on the state of the moss. Underneath is a bed of lava rock because it is in a kind of semi-hydro setup so I don't have to worry about misting her too much, especially when she's in bloom, because the blooms don't like it. But maybe one day I'll change her setup as well and get her into something inorganic. Maria Galdino, thank you ever so much for your support. I really appreciate it. I hope that you like her. Please let me know if you see this video, if you could maybe remind me what video, what comment you were on. Again, I'm ever so sorry, I can't be more specific, but I hope that you see this video and know that you have been acknowledged and that your presence is very, very much appreciated. Phalaenopsis Tabasco Tex, second spike, second bloom has opened and now I dedicate this bloom to Tina Jordan. Hi! A couple of months ago the, the comments that came to my attention were that you wanted a fertilizer regime video and I had filmed how I prepare my fertilizer for my Vanda tub and that is exactly the same how I do what I do for my buckets. So I'm hoping that that worked for you and if you see this video would you let me know please and if you want to see anything more in greater detail also let me know and then there was another one that you were on it was the orangus when I took the orangus off their mounts and put them into pots thank you very very much for those comments I really appreciate having you here Tina and I can say that the longer a summer blooming spike gets the blooms point down, which is unfortunate. Last year I only had one spike that they were all beautifully presented on the top of a leaf. Now I have to angle and fandangle in order to get a nice shot of the bloom. But I do hope that you can see how gorgeous she is. The other blooms are doing quite well as well. One is about to fall and then we still have another one. But this one right here, Tina, as a thank you for supporting my channel, I really appreciate it. Thank you so very much. And I hope that if you see this video, you can just get back to me if all the questions you had regarding my fertilizer were answered with that one video. And if not, I'd be very happy to elaborate. Oh, with a fragrance, yes. <laughs> With every bloom that opens, this one gets more and more potent. Currently, my blooming alley smells like a candy shop. It's wonderful, wonderful. So she has a candy bubblegum kind of smell, but there is a hint of chili in the background, which is very, very uh, obvious. And that is why she is Tabasco Tex. A little bit of spice never hurt anyone's life. Tina, thank you so much for being here. Your support means a lot. I really appreciate it.
Once again, I'm going to go through the messenger in order to thank somebody. And in this case, it will be David, that the greenhouse that we always get to see via Ed's Orchids. So David, if you see this video, I want to thank you for opening up your greenhouse to us and being so generous with your collection and sharing it through Ed's camera. This is my third bloom of my Garen Weaver. This morning I woke up to my first bloom having dropped, but I don't think it dropped. I actually think my gecko did something to it. He seems to jump now. He's a big boy and he jumped onto the bloom and I think that snapped it off because by no means was it old enough to break off like that. And uh, so I'm very sorry I can't show you this gorgeous presentation of three blooms, but David, as a thank you for allowing us into your greenhouse, and Ed, if he doesn't watch YouTube, would you please pass this message on? I'm hoping that you see this video as well. I really want to say thank you. I love the banter between the two of you. I sit there and I think chuckle brothers. It's just, it's just refreshing and wonderful. So thank you ever, ever so much. Let me get you off the tripod and uh, I'll step back a little bit and then show you the tendrils. Right, so we're just off the tripod, have a little look around. I have to beg the embarrassment and excuse the state of my plant, David. I thought that being in a warmer climate, this Phragmopedium might need more fertilizer. Turns out I was proven completely and utterly wrong. So what you see is me overcooking it. But since I've stopped doing that, my growths are coming out clean and I'm quite happy about that now. So I'm just gonna leave it be. Not think just because I'm in a warm climate, things change. En contraire. But anyway, back to the bloom. Fragmopedia and Garen Weaver and its tendrils. Absolutely incredible. I am so happy that this one decided to bloom for me despite my mistreatment of it. And in my case, I grow it in semi-hydro. So it gets flushed now regularly, regularly. And I keep it as Ed's instructions in a cool place where the roots can stay cool. Meanwhile, now that it is in bloom, it's in my blooming alley. But yes, David, thank you so much. I look forward to seeing how your collection progresses when circumstances permit. And Ed, thank you so much once again for taking the time to go and visit and show us David's collection. Both of you, thank you. Supposedly, Phalaenopsis, KTC, Cao Kichatkut, crossed with Corningiana, but it's not. This is, to my understanding, a, not a cross of the Corningiana, Meanwhile, on these videos, I always put all the names down in a timestamp, but I just wanted to show you the tag because this comes from Schwerta and it's not what it says on the tin. And last year I wasn't too convinced about it, but this is, from my understanding, a straight up Cordingiana. But when you look at it now, I think it's quite beautiful and I think she can stay. I have no qualms about keeping her. Last year, she opened cupped like this. None of the blooms really opened. Muse Young. I hope you don't mind that it's just a straight up Corningiana. Two blooms have opened at the same time, so both of these blooms are for you. So before I go into any details and forget why I'm really here, meanwhile getting distracted by this fabulous, fabulous little show. I want to say thank you very much, as always, for the support you have shown my channel, for the comments that you leave me, for the encouraging words. Thank you ever so much, Muse Young. I really appreciate having you here. And what I did want to say about her is that last year I wasn't entirely sure because, yeah, she's mislabeled to my understanding. And she opened up with her bloom's cup, the way you see now. But I think that is just because she's very young. Because 
for the first couple of days, her first bloom opened flat. And now that the others have opened, it's like there's competition here regarding energy and all that. So I think that that is just a trait right now because she is not an, a mature enough orchid. But it is so, so pretty. Personally, if I had seen these blooms on a web page, I wouldn't have bought this orchid. I wanted the cross. Um, but you know, sometimes orchids come into your life and they're meant to be. But she has convinced me. And that fuzzy lip, that hairy, hairy textured lip, that's quite cute. Reminds me of one of those baby eagles that are in the nest waiting for their food. Her fragrance has now developed. Last year she didn't have a fragrance, but now it's like you're smelling pollen. So it's not sweet or the candy or the bubble gum, candy floss, all that. None of that is there at all. To me now, if you stick your nose in there, you smell a pollen fragrance. So it's a bit musty, but not unpleasant. It's, it's interesting. It's not something I will do all the time, every day, every time I walk past her, but it's interesting nonetheless. I've got enough candy going on in my blooming alley at the moment. It's getting quite intoxicating. But yeah, Muse Young, thank you for being here. I really appreciate it. And I hope that you do see this video. Have yourself a wonderful, wonderful day. Corningiana, two blooms in Spain for you. Neophenicia, in my case, Rainbow Forest. I have been since told that this could be a peaches, a van de peaches. I'm not 100% sure because I can't verify the color. But either way, the third spike I have now opening for my Neo Rainbow Forest is for you, Kiyomi Adachi. I hope that Loabo and Aibo, I hope I'm saying those names correctly, Loabo and Aibo are doing well. Those are the pandas that you are featuring in your channel and Aibo has just become a mom. So congratulations to Aibo and Loabo for becoming the dad. But meanwhile, Kiyomi Adachi, I want to say thank you very much for your support very early on in my channel. I do appreciate it. And I hope that you are able to see this video. I hope maybe you can understand what I'm saying. I'm sorry, I'm not very good at my Japanese. I won't even try here now. I don't want to say something wrong. But um, let me just say it this way. Thank you very, very much for being on my channel. And I hope that those pandas are going to be featured more and more in your channel and that we may, might get to see the baby one day. Thank you, Kiyomo. Thank you so much for being here. I really appreciate it. Look at how gorgeous this spike is from the back. I like to see spikes from behind. I think there's a certain je ne sais quoi about blooms coming out of a single stalk and fanning out like this and making room for each other as they do. Quite amazing. Let's do some globe trotting now. Let's go from Japan or Korea. Maybe Kiyomi is in Korea. I'm not entirely sure. But from that part of the world, let's move to Greece. Let's just zip on over and say hello to Maria Karantanasi. Hi Greece, how are you doing? How is Greece doing? How is your summer? How are your vandas? I can tell you that Lavender Mist here, her third spike, blooms entirely for you. Because we did have a conversation about vandas. And I can tell you mine are pretty stressed as well, despite keeping them in the water more often than not. They are really, really now starting to struggle. And the only reason I have the sun shining on the blooms is to show them to you, Maria, to dedicate them to you, to say thank you to you for supporting my channel and being ever so kind and encouraging. 
she is going straight back into the shade now so that she can not get more stressed than she is. Eventually, I'm going to be cutting her in half to save her, but I'll do a video on that in case you have similar circumstances. Then we can discuss the reasons why I'm going to do what I'm going to do. But in the meantime, Maria, I hope that you are enjoying a beautiful, beautiful Greek summer, that the world circumstances aren't too much of a challenge, and that your orchids are otherwise doing very, very well and giving you a lot of joy. Thank you so much for being here on my channel. I very, very much appreciate it. Live the dream. Need I say more? That is the channel that this Neostylus Lusneri Spike is dedicated to. And I'm currently actually living the dream seeing this. It's the best spike I've ever had. And now she has finally got a fragrance. There's nothing timid about her fragrance. During the day, I'm getting wafts of lemon. Pure lemonade. Absolutely delicious. I've just poured myself a glass. <laughs> Live the dream. When this spike started to open, I thought, yeah, perfect. Perfect to say thank you to you because at the moment I am really, really living the dream of seeing my Neo Stylus Lusneri perform so beautifully. Incredible. Now, you might wonder why I never let the spikes bloom out before I film them. Well, that is because, in my opinion, I can see that the lower blooms always start to fade a little bit. And then it's a shame, even though the top ones are open, you've already got something fading on the bottom. I find a spike presents itself, especially with the Neos, best when there's still a few more buds to open. So before the heat catches the lower blooms, live the dream, may I say thank you ever so much for supporting me, for being on my channel, for your encouraging comments. And on top of that, I hope that you like my Neo. If not, you're going to just have to let me know in the comments below and I'm sure I can make it right with something else. In the meantime, I am confident that this, this is just living the dream. Thank you for keeping the motivation going. I hope that all is well in your corner of the world. Does that look a little bit better? While you were watching the video, <laughs> I harvested a keiki just to open up the bloom show a little bit. I removed this little keiki and now there's a little bit more air in between and we can see the whole thing starting to unfold a bit more clearly. I love this little cluster right on the top. You'll probably hear me say that a lot, but it's so cute. It's like, look at me, king of the castle. <laughs> uh, everybody, thank you so very much for watching. Thank you for being here, for your support and the encouraging messages you leave. I really, really appreciate them. I have a keiki to go and take care of and I hope everybody has a wonderful day. Stay safe. And I'll see you next time. Bye.